glory. Let's just lift up our hands. We give you praise. We give you praise. Wrap me in your arms, Lord. Glory. It's nothing like that secret place. It's nothing like that place, man. You can just kind of let everything go. All the worries, all the cares, all the frustrations, everything you've been going through. Just like a child, you just sit in your daddy's lap and you just just in his arms, in his presence. And he just, you just know everything's gonna be okay. Everything is gonna work out well. And he's just saying, trust me in this. Trust me in this season. Trust me in this time in your life. Trust me, just trust me. Just trust that I know what I'm doing with you. Trust me. That's that word I hear, just trust, trust, trust. Rely on me, depend on me. I am enough. I am more than enough. Have I not said that I am El Shaddai, the God who is more than enough? All sufficiency is in me. Everything you need is in me. I'm the God who will orchestrate everything on your behalf. I'll bring all things together and make all things plain unto you. Just wait and see. Just obey me and trust me. As you do that part that I've told you to do, more will be open up to you. I know that fear has been knocking on your door, but he says, trust me, trust me, trust me that I've already been working behind the scenes. I've already been working in your body. I've already been preparing things for the way to be made plain and straight. He says, trust me, trust me. And I need you to say this, I trust you, Lord. <laughs> I trust you, I trust you, I trust you, I trust you. I trust you with my mind, I trust you with my marriage, I trust you with my children, I trust you with my family, I trust you with my money, I trust you in my life, I trust you with my career, with my calling, whatever it is, I trust you. Be faithful. Be faithful to the thing that's in your hands, says the Lord. Be faithful to that thing. Be faithful to the thing that I've already put in front of you. Be faithful to that. Treat it like it's much, even when it's little. And then you will be rulers over much. Be faithful, for I will not violate my word, says the Lord. I will not violate my principles and laws. So follow and trust that it will work. Now it's time to rest. It's time to rest. Rest in your mind, rest in your body. For there is a spurt of growth that is about to hit. There's a spurt, there's a spurt, there's a window. I see a window of, of great acceleration that's about to take place, but it's gonna require great work, but great focus. Don't be distracted by what's on the right or what's on the left. Do what I told you to do. Shoot. Mm. The anointing is present, man. It's Real heavy, yeah, 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 yeah. Trust, trust, yeah. Mhm, mm mhm, mm mhm, mm mhm, mm mhm. Mm mm -hmm. Yeah, Lord, yeah. Ooh, yeah. This is a time of great refreshing for people. A time of great refreshing. You've so much. You've exerted a lot of energy and force, but now is a time of. This is your harvest time and you got to know rest, rest, rest. Pick when to work, pick when to rest, rest. We rest in the finished work of Christ that he has already done everything that is needed. Then our faith appropriates it to our lives and we believe that we receive it. But in your mind, you need to rest because your minds have been racing. And God is saying, I need you to settle down so that you can focus on the things that I'm telling you specifically. It's the clutter. It's the clutter of busyness that has drowned out my voice. And I need you to be still and hear from me. For that one thing that I tell you to do will open up other doors. Glory to God. Man, I see this. It's like such a calm and peace. On, I see that thing so clear. Just rest and enjoy this season. I hear this thing. Enjoy the rest of this time this year. 
because we're about to hit a whirlwind in faith. I don't know what's about to happen. Something is about to hit. Not just us, but this earth. We got to be ready for it. So you got to trust God. When it doesn't look right, trust God. Even in this election, trust God. Trust God. No matter who's appointed, who's elected, trust God. We are gonna see it. For the body of Christ is rising stronger before the return of our Lord. I see that man, I see that thing. My God in heaven, woo. It's such a peace. Man, I see this thing. It'll look like upheaval and craziness, but I'm telling you, there is such a peace in his body like never before. It's just peace. <laughs> you don't have to stress, struggle, and strain not for one moment longer. Trust. Yeah. There's a boldness and there's a confidence that's rising up in God's people. Yeah. It's an ease like I've never experienced before. It's a rest, it's a joy, it's an excitement. And it's like I see it even in generational gaps, the ages, the younger are so excited, but the older are finally like, okay, God, I can enjoy the fruit of everything I've sown now. There's going to be great joy in Zion. Great joy. Great joy. There'll be great mourning and there'll be times of tragedies that'll begin to happen in the earth. But be of good cheer. He says, I've already overcome the world. So that doesn't affect the household of faith. The household of faith. For they're being released here and there and there. Apostles and prophets, evangelists and pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Here a little, there a little, and they're popping up all over, and they're popping up all over, and they're popping up all over. For they've been strategically placed for such a time as this. For I'm blowing a fresh wind. A fresh wind. And a fresh fire on people to energize them for this next push and move. For many signs and wonders shall be wrought in the name of my child Jesus. For he's seated at my right hand, forever making intercession for you. So believe that. Rest in that. That is already done. Rest in that. <laughs> glory. Glory. To God be the glory. I'm talking about an ease in receiving healings like never before. It's time to see the demonstrated miracle working power at an accelerated rate now. For I'll make things whole, whole, whole. Not just healed, but whole, whole, whole. It'll heal in one area, but it'll make it whole in everything else, whole. I'll heal your body, but it'll make you whole even in your mind and in your, your money and in your relationships, whole. And you'll see how connected everything is in the spirit. And I'll begin to open up. Yeah, for it, yeah, that's it. That's it. For the eyes of your understanding of being enlightened this day, says the Lord. And I'm releasing those things that you've been praying. And I'm going to show you like you've never seen before. Households. Households. I see y'all's household. I see people coming into your households more. Filling your household and the power filling the household and the teaching filling your household and your teaching gift will be cultivated in those atmospheres. Yeah. 
wholeness, 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 wholeness. I can't hold this anymore. I feel like I got to release this, finally say it. Nicole, God's been talking to me about you. I don't know, it's about your health. It's getting your body ready. It's like, I, he probably already told you. I'm sure he's going to just confirm whatever he's already said. It's like your health. That thing just keeps coming up to me over the past few days. And it's like, what, do I need to tell her? Do I need to say anything? Or just leave it alone? I know it's safe, but it's like, no, just, it's like you're preparing your body to receive. Your health is going to be whatever, whatever he tells you to do. With your diet is concerned, your exercise, stress levels, do it. And just stay faithful. Whew. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I, could, I, I, I feel like I could stay in this vein. Oh, I could move on. It's like it's up to me either way. Because <laughs> I want to finish teaching you, but I want to make sure I'm releasing everything I need to release in this moment. I see it. I see it, Spirit of Fire. He just wants us to get everything in order. That's when he talks about getting your house in order. Get everything in order. I'm telling you to get in order. From your finances, to your budget, to your body, to your marriage, to your mind, rest and just get everything in place. The stuff I'm telling you to do, just do it. If I'm telling you to get your money in order and to see what's coming in and what's going out, that means I want to equip you and I'm stretching you for more. Get ready for more. Get ready for more. More, 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 more. Hallelujah. Yeah. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Glory to God. More. More. Hallelujah. They're coming. Just, just hold tight. They're coming. He just had to get some things in order and straight. They're coming. <laughs> Lord, I remove my agenda out the way and let yours be pre preeminent. Not the way that I wanted to do it, the way you want it done. In the name of Jesus. Lord, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. Glory to God. Whoo! Hallelujah. Amen. That was good. That was good. That was good. That was good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's like y'all just need a refreshing. I, I felt like that today. I didn't know what was going to happen. But it was like I knew I heard that. It was like a refreshing. It's a refreshing. It'll be pockets like this where the power will just show up and he'll just sit. This is only like ankle deep that we're talking about now. It's going to hit strong and stronger. I'm telling y'all, go ahead and get ready for it. People are going to want to come in just to get in his presence and the power. Just the power that's supposed to emanate from this place of times of prayer and fasting and getting on our face before God and pushing aside those things and laying aside every weight in the sin that does so easily beset us and running the race with patience, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. I'm telling you. Hallelujah. So Father, we thank you for this, another opportunity to minister to these, your precious sheep. I thank you that revelation knowledge of your word will flow freely from heaven uninterrupted and unhindered by any satanic or demonic force, none of me, all of you. Holy Spirit, speak through my vocal cords and think through my mind. If need be, minister through my hands to meet the needs of these, your precious people. Glory to God. Glory to God. Just come here real quick, Jewel. I just keep seeing you. I just... This is just a replenishment of what you've been pouring out. God is just pouring back in. You can just stand in front. You just want more of him. This is just a replenishment. This is all. 
Shambra Mashatan no Brose Kane de Bohle le Bof de Shala Baste. Y'all just stretch your hands towards him. He's just bringing fresh anointing. You've been through a whirlwind this year, so he's settling you in your mind, in your focus. Yeah, uh-huh, uh-huh, yeah. Mm-mm, your brother, no, no. You, uh-uh, you foul spirit that's been trying to come against their mind. Uh-uh, 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 in the name of Jesus. We cover her through faith and prayer and love. Yeah. It's so. It's done. It's already done. Now, Father, I transfer this anointing to her to teach and to train. Let it be amplified and heightened. Let the prophetic wind of your grace come upon her now. Shabrana, let her see the eyes of her understanding be enlightened. Let her see things in scripture she hasn't seen before. Reveal yourself to her in a great way. Reveal yourself to her, the lover of her soul, the lover of her soul. And we give you praise, glory, and honor for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 Say this with me. Say, for the Lord is good, and his mercy endureth forever. Let's say it again. For the Lord is good, and his mercy endureth forever. Well, we just want to welcome you to Spirit of Fire Fellowship. Everybody in person and online, we love you. The anointing of God, y'all experiencing it there, wherever you are right now. And we just thank God for you showing up today. We don't believe it's by chance that you're here, but we believe that God has divinely orchestrated it and led you here. For those, our Spirit of Fire nation that are in person, but also online and virtual, we just thank God for you, for you tuning in, that you're a partaker of this grace that God is releasing in this place today. And so we are just excited to have you here with us. And so on behalf of Pastor Raquel and myself, we just want to say welcome to everybody today. And so we love you so much. Praise God. And um, Jewel, I may have you ready for that song at the end. Not now, but at the end maybe. So just, just in case, be ready. Just in case. And so at this time, um, I don't know if uh, we release for the children, if they're uh, going to do so. So at this time, I'm going to do this. You know, when we have a flow like this, sometimes I like to just kind of go into it. Um, I'll do announcements and all of that stuff afterwards. So I want you to do this. I want you to open up your Bibles, if you would, to the book of Ephesians chapter 6. The book of Ephesians chapter 6. And um, I wanna, um, I'm going to close this series out today dealing with the authority of the believer, the believer's authority, and exercising this authority. And understanding that, just as a recap, that authority is delegated power. It's delegated power. Um, I, I'm just under assignment. I know this is what I'm supposed to be preaching on right now. I'm very confident about it, um, this series. I pray that you're beginning something out of it. But I need for you to really go back and dig into those messages and really get it in your heart. Because what I'm doing is, excuse me, is training you. Um, developing you and getting you ready for just just life in general. But I need to explain some things and, and to reveal some things because messages like this, we don't necessarily always hear preached as much in forefront and circles. But and sometimes I was wondering, is this a little, you know, sometimes you, you ask, is it a little too heavy for some people? But it's not heavy to me per se. But um, I believe that we need to equip the saints for the work of ministry to do what God called us to do. And this is part of my assignment to teach God's people who they are and to, to walk in this authority and to walk in this victory. So I want to be faithful to that. And so as we talked about authority being delegated power, that Satan has no authority over us, only the authority that we actually allow him to use. And usually what happens is he uses our authority against us to speak things over our own lives and ourselves to stop the plan of God to stop the will of God in our lives. And so here in Ephesians, Paul is talking to the church at Ephesus, and he's saying in verse 12, for we wrestle not against, I want us to read this together, those online and those in person. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. And so, um, I don't want to say that, I don't want to interrupt. Um, 
No, I want to say this. I want to, I want to pastor and lead real quick. Um, for those that may be watching that aren't here today, um, normally maybe or whatever the case, I, I need us to get ready for the harvest that God wants to bring, but we got to expand our capacity to receive. And so what can happen is sometimes people don't always understand what it takes to plow in ministry, what it takes to develop, to grow, to increase, to get the vision and the job done. And so all hands need to be on deck. And I got to let you know how Satan works, how he plots and schemes against people to shut down the vision of the kingdom from moving forward and what he'll try to do to get people off kill. And, and listen, and I'm, not just, I'm not speaking to an individual. I'm, not, I'm just speaking in general because I got to train you and teach you and get you ready because this goes into this message today because if we understand that we don't wrestle against flesh and blood but against principalities and powers and the rulers of darkness, but you got to understand and understand the wiles of the devil, the schemes of the enemy. Everything ain't a devil, everything, and I, and I get that, and I understand that. But I need you to know, to recognize when it is. And when he's trying to get you off by little things to distract you, because one of your greatest assets in these days, months, and years to come is going to be your focus. That if he gets you off focus, he'll get you off keel. He'll get you out of balance. When you get out of balance, you just feel off in life. And when you fell off in life, you begin to put stuff off that you used to be very disciplined in. Discipline is going to be, see, that's where focus comes from. It comes from great discipline. And so sometimes you don't need a, you, I heard somebody else preach this, and I heard a little bit of it, just an excerpt, but I, I, I so agree with it. There's some things you don't need to cast the devil out. You just need to discipline your flesh. It ain't got nothing to do with the devil because the devil will come. Temptation is going to come. Testing trials is going to come. But it's how you handle these things that will determine your growth, maturity, and development. People say they want this power, but you got to know the cost for it. The cost to walk in glory, the, the cost to be able to speak into people's lives and see the things because they are, that's the gift. That's the anointing and operation, and that's the gift, one of the gifts of the Spirit of, of, of God that, that goes into operation. But now you still have to discipline yourself to position yourself to receive certain things. And so I'm telling you now, like never before, just, just get focused because every joint is supplying. If you don't come to supply your joint, then it's pulled from another source. And if you ever seen when one limb is hurting, then you overcompensate on the other one. And then it draws on the one that's functioning because the one that ain't functioning ain't working right. So think about it in the body of Christ. If one part of the body ain't functioning right, then the other parts overcompensate to make sure that things get done. But then it brings strain on them. Amen. Glory to God. And so... That means many hands, old Chinese proverb, many hands make light work. And even in the spirit, when you need help spiritually, when you got the group coming together praying about a thing, when you got people coming together and now we're believing for one another while you going through your thing and I'm going through my thing and I take authority over that thing and you take authority over this thing, that seems like now everything is covered. It helps you. It helps, it helps, it helps, and it takes the load off of you that you don't have to do life alone. I don't know who I'm talking to now, but you don't have to do life alone. This is part of your authority, learning how to cast that care on God. And so sometimes people are embarrassed. They feel like they done messed up and God don't trust them no more. God can't use them. That's a lie from the pit of hell. God going to use you with your limp. <laughs> why he's healing the limp. I can preach on that right there, boy. I can preach on that right there. See, you disqualifying yourself. 
And what some people do is they don't show up because they already disqualified themselves when God already forgave them, but they ain't forgive themselves. And so now they just stop in the middle of the process. And I come against that in the name of Jesus. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Glory to God. So come on home. Your family got you. Amen. Ephesians 6, 12. Let's read verse 12. Ready? Now, y'all ain't got it by now. I guess y'all won't find it. <laughs> so Ephesians 6, 12. Ready? Let's read. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Okay. So we see here, we don't wrestle against the flesh and the blood, now, I want to I read this out of the Amplified version. Uh, I'm going to do this. I'm going to read out the Amplified Classic. And it says, For we are not wrestling with flesh and blood, contending only with physical opponents, but against the um, uh, despotisms, against the powers, against the master spirits, who are the world rulers of this present darkness, against the spirit forces of wickedness in the heavenly supernatural sphere. Now, we see here four classifications or divisions of demonic forces. Now, this is a particular incident that happened where um, a man by the name of Kenneth Hagin, prophet of God who's going on home to be with the Lord, actually an apostle of faith, um, <clears throat> and the Lord Jesus appeared to him. And in one of these visions, the Lord began to teach him about devils, demons, and evil spirits. And the Lord began to share with him these classifications within scripture that we've read for so many years, but sometimes unless the breathing, the revelation comes out, sometimes you'll skip over stuff and don't even realize it's been there the whole time. And he said that there are four classifications of demon forces. Four. Number one, principalities. Number two, powers. Number three, rulers of the darkness of this world. And number four, wicked spirits in high or heavenly places. Principalities, powers, rulers of the darkness of this world, wicked spirits in high or heavenly places. And the highest spirits that we have to deal with, that we have to deal with, are the rulers of the darkness of this world. Now, I want to read this. Now, I'm, this is from Jesus himself speaking this thing, and I'm, I'm just backing up with the word as well. He says, now watch this. Jesus wants us to take care of the ones on the earth, and he will take care of the ones in the heavenlies. This is important. We take care of the ones here on the earth. He takes care of the ones in the heavenlies. Colossians chapter 2. I'm going to just keep going. Colossians chapter 2, verse nine, verses 9 through 15. Colossians chapter 2, verses 9 through 15. And it says, For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, speaking of Jesus, and you are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power. Which is the head of all principality and power. He's the head of it. We're complete. Now watch this. We are complete in him. We are complete in Christ, who is the head of all principality and power. We're in him. He's the head over all. Okay? Which is the head of all principality and power, in whom also you are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands. The circumcision was a token of the covenant. The Bible says we have the circumcision of the heart when we get born again. So that's our token of the covenant we have with God is when we get born again. Now the, 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 the presence of God, the nature of God comes and abides on the inside of us. We're in Christ. Christ dwells in us, the hope of glory. Now watch this. And he says, in putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ, buried with him in baptism, wherein also you are risen with him, through the faith of the operation of God, who hath raised him from the dead. Watch this. We were buried with him. This is what baptism is about, even water baptism. 
When you go under that water and then you're being raised, that water, your sins have been buried. Your sins are dead and gone. The power of sin has no dominion over us any longer. Sin has no dominion, rule, reign, or power over us any longer. Now, what am I doing? Let's see. <laughs> Some of y'all are looking at, why am I looking at certain seats empty? I'm looking at everybody like they're here. That's how I do. I preach like, every, I, this, this, this is what I'm doing. I, I see it. I see. I'm just obeying what the Spirit of God tells me to do while I'm doing it. Now, watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. This is so good. Y'all got to stay with this one. Y'all got to, I need y'all to see. Let the eyes of our understanding be enlightened. We are buried with him in baptism, verse 12, wherein also you are risen with him through the faith. You're risen with him. Say, I'm risen with Christ. Okay. Through the faith of the operation of God who have raised him from the dead and you being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, hath he quickened together with him, hath forgiven you how many trespasses? All trespasses. He's forgiven us all trespasses. All trespasses we have been forgiven of. Say, I'm forgiven. I'm forgiven. You got to keep that in the forefront of your thinking. I am forgiven. I'm forgiven. God has forgiven me through Christ. I'm forgiven. What does this have to do with my authority? It got everything to do with it. You would not have authority over devils, demons, and evil spirits had you not had been a partaker in this. Now watch this. And you being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, hath he quickened together with him, having forgiven all your you all trespasses, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. The blotting out of the handwriting of ordinances. The handwriting, what is this? This is the law. The handwritten ordinances of God that we could not keep in and of ourselves that he gave to Moses and Moses came and gave it to the children of Israel. But watch this. Now that you're in Christ, you are no, lo no longer under the law, but you're under grace. Watch this because he's taken you out of you a heart of stone and put in you a heart of flesh and put his spirit on the inside of you. And he says, I'm going to call. I'm going to write my laws on your heart and put my spirit in you to cause you to be able to walk in my ordinances. So I don't have an outward ordinance. I got the inward nature of God that's driving me now. This is important. This is important. Because he nailed that stuff to the cross. And having spoiled principalities, let me, let me, let, hold on, hold on, hold on. We preach so much cross that it has to be preached. But when we going to start preaching from the throne, your sins have already been taken care of. You need to hear who you are now in him. If you always thinking about your sin, that's sin consciousness. But when you think about your righteousness in Christ, now you're righteous conscience. When you're righteous conscious, then you know that you have all rights and privileges. You have, I know, you got to hear me. You have all rights and privileges. That's what we were just talking about the other night. We were just talking about this the other night. When you feel like you don't deserve something, we asked somebody this question in a session we had the other day, and it was like, and um, Brother Lee, he, he, he said it, and, and I knew when he said it, he was on it. And I was like, but then I was like, now it, it's, it's more to this. Now watch this. And the question poses is this. Do you feel like you have a right? Or do you feel like you deserve, that's the word, do you feel like you deserve goodness? Do you feel like you really deserve it? A lot of people don't. Because they're so conscious of their sin. Now, because you're conscious of sin, it brings guilt and condemnation. Therefore, there is therefore now no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus. When you're not condemned, there's a boldness that comes on you, and now you realize you got a right to something. 
When you know you got a right to it, you no longer settle for anything less than all your inheritance. I want my stuff because Jesus died for me to get it. It's, oh Lord, I'm, 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 it is an indictment for you to walk broke. It is an indictment for you to walk sick and diseased up because he died to take it all off. I just got to let this, I got to let this sucker rip now. Listen, he died for you to live life and to live it abundantly. You ain't supposed to be beneath. You are supposed to be ruling and reigning in life. Glory to God. This is our right. We're in him. In him we live. See, you quote it. But do you believe it? Let me settle down. Lord Jesus, this thing rises up in me strong. Do you believe that I'm supposed to be? I'm supposed to walk in opulence. I'm supposed to walk in joy. I'm supposed to walk in peace. That's my birthright. Okay. Come on, let's keep going. Okay, I'm just, I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself, please. Lord Jesus. It's like I got to calm down because I just want to get it. I want to, if I could cut your head open, just pour it in, I just would. It's like, Lord, let's get this thing. Let's get this thing. Let's get this thing. When I study scripture and I meditate, it starts angering me. If I don't see what I'm reading in me, I don't want to just preach it, Lord. I want to be a living demonstration of this thing. That's it. In every area. See, so many of us just focus. I hear preachers do it all the time. They focus on one area of your divine inheritance package. But what about the total package? I want the whole pie. I want it all. See, somebody that thinks less than who they are, thinks that's being greedy, is being arrogant. No, is knowing who I am. Okay, let's keep going. Let's keep going. I'm gonna who we digging? I like this. And having spoiled principalities and powers. He spoiled them. He spoiled them. I like this. He spoiled them. He spoiled principalities and powers. Let me, let me, let me, let me go back up to 14. I got to read this out of the Amplified. I got to read this out of the, the Amplified Classic. Verse 13. I'm going back up here. I'm going to read. And I'm going to finish in 15. He says, and you were dead in trespasses and in the uncircumcision of your flesh, your sensuality, your sinful carnal nature, God brought to life together with Christ, having freely forgiven us all our transgressions, having canceled and blotted out and wiped away the handwriting of the note bond with its legal decrees and demands, which was in force and stood against us, hostile to us. This note with its regulations, decrees and demands, he set aside and cleared completely out of our way by nailing it to his cross. God disarmed the principalities and powers that were ranged against us. See, he spoiled them or disarmed them. You ever seen somebody that's been disarmed, they got a gun or a weapon, and they've been disarmed of their power and ability to kill you, to hurt you, and to harm you? Jesus disarmed principalities and powers that were ranged against us and made a bold display and a public example of them in triumphing over them in him and in it the cross. When he, watch this, while they thought that they was making him look like a fool, he was disarming all of Satan's forces. Y'all, y'all got to hear this. You got to remember this. I don't care how much the devil tries to roar his ugly head in your life, I don't care if he shows up in the form and he's possessed somebody and they, their head turn around and they spit up green stuff that you have authority over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Oh, there are dem demons that have possessed people and the people climb up walls. They've had cobras as babies, all of that stuff. See, we don't see some of that stuff over here. 
That's stuff that, that exists and that it happens. And so what Satan does, this is why he tries to get the image of fear in us so that we're afraid of him at every turn. But I'm here to tell you that the glory of God, the authority of God is rising up in his people and you're going to be able to stand firm and stand strong and know that no matter, no weapon formed against you is going to prosper. I don't care if a witch doctor, voodoo doctor come and say they're throwing a curse on you. Listen, you will stand firm and bold and say the thing that you're trying to bring on me will come seven times greater on you and it was shut down in this process I said man I said man shoot I, I feel some here it's time to go to do the work I'm getting you ready so as we engage society and community, you got to know that I walk in this authority. He is, Jesus has already disarmed. The Father through Jesus has already disarmed. Spoiled principalities made a show of them openly. He disarmed them. He disarmed. I want you to remember that going home. I don't care. He disarmed them. He stripped their power over us. Stop talking about the devil like he's some big thing. Mm. Jesus in his death, burial, and resurrection spoiled or defeated these same principalities and powers that we have to deal with. The Lord went on to tell Brother Hagin, he said, the highest types of demons with which you have to deal with on the earth, the rulers of the darkness of this world who rule all unsaved people. And all who are in darkness, they rule over them and dominate them. That is why people do and say things that they don't intend to. They are dominated by the kingdom of darkness. Vow, perverted, wicked, and evil things. How can you rape a child, a baby? That is pure evil. How can you decapitate somebody with no conscience? It's evil. And he went on to say, it's always one of these rulers of the darkness of this world that possesses a person. They rule not only those who are within the darkness of this world, but they also tell the powers what to do. Then the powers rule over the principalities and tell them what to do. The lowest type of demons have very little to do. They do very little thinking of their own and are told what to do. There is rank in the kingdom of darkness. As the Lord was telling him about this, this is the account that I've been talking to you about when that little demon began to come up between them, and then he threw this, this smoke, this cloud, and then Brother Hagin got so frustrated that Jesus wouldn't do anything about it that he, out of frustration, told the demon to shut up and then to get out of there. And this is when Jesus told him, if you didn't do anything, I couldn't. I couldn't. Man I, man, I sense something here. I, I, I wish I could tell y'all what I'm sensing, but I, I don't want to say too much. Y'all think I'm crazy? No, nah, I know y'all wouldn't. Y'all wouldn't. Y'all wouldn't. <clears throat> I sense it. My, my, one of my babies told me about this. They saw this happen. I, I forgot all about it. This is when we was in you know, Belmont in school when she said she saw the angel behind me while I was preaching. She said he looked like Mr. Clean. He like he had the ball. This one, but was like she saw. She was like he was real big, and I saw it. But I sense, I sense the presence of that angel with me. While I'm preaching, that, that's what I say. I, I wasn't gonna say it, but I just sense the presence of God. I sense my protection and my help. Ain't this thing? Who is? Who? Okay, come on, come on, come on. Stay, stay, stay focused, my. I can't, I can't get lost right now. Can't get lost in the spirit right now. Oh, come on, stay focused. Who? Corey. Thank you, Lord. Whew. Lord, give me, let me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. Who? Let me 
دانش آخر I know Lord I gotta go who I gotta tell him who open the doors for me Lord to go preach to tell him who Lord I'm good I'm good don't get me don't get near me real quick <laughs> yeah it's who He went to tell him, he says, if you don't do anything, I, c- I could not, I cannot. He was so baffled by this. He was like, Lord, I know this is you in front of me. I'm not denying this experience that I'm having. But you say out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. I can't receive that unless you provide scripture for me. And that's safe. Because even scripture says that Satan can turn into an angel of light. Even Paul warned. If a spirit comes to you and preaches another gospel to you than what I'm preaching, you are not to receive it. That's actually what I believe. If you correct me if I'm wrong, and I have to do some fact checking just to make sure, but I believe that's what happened even in the Mormon religion where Joseph Smith, he received a revelation from an angel that appeared to him. Went directly against what Paul said. It was the exact experience that Paul talked about. And that's where a lot of the Book of Mormon came from. It was like from that revelation, but it wasn't in alignment with the scripture. So just because you have a spiritual experience, your safeguard is the word of God. We got to know the word. Not just experiences. That's why I love the experiences. I love the expressions. I love falling out under the power. But this word delivers. This word is everlasting. This word is what sets us free. This word is what keeps us. It gives us wisdom and knowledge and understanding. He gives us the scriptures to live by. It is the living, breathing word of God. I'm telling you, this is life. This is Jesus himself, the bread of life. Got to feed off this thing. Man, I sense this thing. Ooh, okay. Okay, let me get myself together here. He said, I do you, he says, I'm not going to give you, he says, he says, I'm going to do you one better. I'm going to give you four scriptures that support this. Number one, Matthew 28, 18. Oh, six, I'm going to start 16 through 20. And it says, then the 11 disciples went away into Galilee, <coughs> into a mountain where Jesus had appointed them. And when they saw him, they worshiped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Then he says, go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. So be it. It is so. So how does this support that? He said, all power in heaven and earth has been given unto me. Now go. In that command of go is the transfer of power and authority to do what he's telling you to go and do. He says, go. Now watch this. Go you therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. And then teach them to observe all things. Teach them. So I ain't got to pray about this. He already gave me the command. So just go. Go. Let's just set it up. Where can we go? Who? I don't care. Let's create an audience. Let's go. Sometimes we overcomplicate the go. I saw a friend of mine, um, he, he posted something online, and uh, brother in the Lord, love this guy, man, known him for many years, and he posted something about his destiny and purpose, and then somebody just made a simple statement, you can go, ahead, go online and go ahead and create and just begin to display what your gifts, talents, and abilities. And I was like, I said, like, that, it was so simple and so profound. You ain't got to wait for nobody to give you a platform. Demonstrate. 
click on your phone and go for it. You can add all the bells and whistles later, but start. The setup is already in place for the gospel to go to every part of this planet. And don't you know there's still some people who have never heard the gospel preached? I mean, it blows my mind because we're in this Western civilization and this technology, but there are some people who have never heard about Jesus after all this time and all these people. And it's like, what? It still blows my mind. I'm like, wow. Second verse, Mark 16, 15 through 18. Mark chapter 16, verses 15 through 18. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe in my name, in my name, transfer of authority, power of attorney. In my name shall they cast out devils. In my name they shall speak with new tongues. In my name they shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. All this is done in his name. In his name. Now, you don't go do something foolish like some people have snake handling churches and services. That, that, they, and they base it off of this scripture. And it's the dumbest thing. I'm sorry. Forgive me for saying it that way. But, but I, I, it just kind of came out that way. But, and it was like they meant well. But it's like, what are you doing? Then you just go pick up stuff it's like, like you're tempting that thing. No. He's like, watch this. You can take up now. It can literally mean if you come into contact. Because remember, you have authority over the animal kingdom. But then also, don't forget types and shadows of even demonic forces and principalities and powers. And they got people that's tempting doing that and people who actually get killed because they get bit by these things doing this stuff. And they're having all these weird things. It's like, wait a minute. And then they're tempted by trying to drink something. Let me just go ahead and drink it, some, some poison to see if it's going to hurt me because he said that it won't hurt me. It ain't like you intentionally do it, but if you take partake of something, it won't hurt you. This is why we bless our food. And this is why, watch this, every disease, germ, virus, bad bacteria, and infirmity that touches my body dies instantly. So if something comes, watch this, it won't affect me. See, this is why you got to have wisdom with the word. To know how to put it together, line upon line, precept upon precept. Because even Paul, remember in the book of Acts, he was, I forgot where he was traveling, and I think he put his hand near the fire, something, the snake came up and bit him, and he shook it off. And so that was a direct correlation. If this thing were to happen, it won't hurt you. Do you think about this. Think about this, folks. Don't just read this. Think about this. What if a snake just came up and bit you all of a sudden? You know how many people just would naturally freak out, and that's a normal reaction. But would you even remember the scripture? It shall not hurt me. Do you know the level of confidence and faith you need to have to function like that? This is why, too, you need wisdom with this word and this confidence and boldness, because as your faith grows in it, you won't now go and do foolish things, talking about you doing it in the name of the Lord. Okay, let's keep going, let's keep going. Luke 10, 17 through 20. And the 70, watch this. <clears throat> and the 70 returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Don't you know lightning falls at 186,000 miles per second, I think it is? Think about just how fast he got kicked out of heaven. God kicked him out of heaven. Think of the authority even with that process. And he says, watch this, behold, I give unto you power 
to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Notwithstanding in this, rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Rejoice. I know we get excited about the power, but you need to rejoice that your name written in heaven. See, I love the power, I love the glory, I love the anointing and all of that. But sometimes if you don't watch it, you'll start turning that into the main thing and the idol versus the real, the real spiritual victory is the fact that your name is written in heaven. That you'll forever be with the Lord. Now, while we're here, he equips us with power and authority to walk in dominion and have access to the Father through him. To walk and have dominion and dominate in this earth. Oh man, this is good. This is so good. Even in the book of James 4 7, he says, Submit yourselves therefore to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Submit yourselves therefore to God, resist the devil, and he will flee. That word flee means to run as in terror. Satan will run from you as in terror as you submit it to God and resist him. 1 Peter 5, 8 through 10 says, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, didn't say he was a roaring lion, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking, seeking, seeking whom he may devour, whom resist steadfast in the faith. You got to resist him. You and I must resist him. You got to resist Instead of you sitting there wallowing, why is he attacking me? Why is he attacking me? Why is he attacking me? Use that same energy to resist that sucker. Resist him in faith. It is written. That's how Jesus resisted. It is written. What he's trying to do is wear you. Listen to me. He's trying to wear you down through constant harassment in your soul. So whatever negative thing he keeps bringing up to you, you got to shut it down and resist it. Stand fast in the faith. I can't tell you how many times I've preached this over the years. How much I've said it, how much people have heard it over and over again. Until it comes, becomes a reality to you. Until you make a decision to stand firm. Until you make a decision to stop tucking tail and running. And you stand your ground. He will keep bullying you until you stand your ground. He says, stay at fast. He says, whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. You ain't the only one going through it. But Satan makes you feel like you're the only one going through it because you feel so isolated when you're attacked in your soul. You feel like you're the only one dealing with it. You're the only one that got this problem. You're the only one that ever dealt with it. No, you ain't the only one. But watch this. But. That but means to cancel out. Even after you're going through all of this stuff, all of these afflictions, but the God of all grace who hath called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus after that you have suffered a while. Make you perfect, establish, strengthen, settle you. You're just going through this little thing, but, but, guess, guess, but guess, watch this, this is coming out in the power of the Spirit. You're coming out stronger, you're coming out stable established, strengthened in the faith. I know we don't always, we, we just want the thing to lead. But your development happens in the workout room. See, your work, your development happens in your resistance to the thing. Not just you going through it. This is why it seems like you're still going through because you haven't resisted. Until you develop in your resistance, you're still going to be combated with this thing. Mm-hmm. Okay, let y'all go. Ephesians 4.27 in the Amplified says it like this. Leave no such room or foothold for the devil. Give no opportunity to him. Give no place to the devil. You got enough temptation to deal with without creating some of your own. 
He says, give no place. Give no place. This is why sin will be an issue. Addictions, things that we open up and develop the taste for, that now become stronghold in our soul, uh, fortified thoughts that have now strengthened so deep in our psyche, in our soul, that now we're compelled to do it, and we feel like we can't help but to do it. But now you have to reestablish yourself in the word and take authority over your mind and now bring those thoughts under subjection because it starts in the thought realm. And now as you begin to meditate on, your, on the word of God, it begins and you make your confessions of faith based on the word and now you're replacing that negative thought with the thought of the word, it now begins to now transform your thinking and freeze you in that area. And so the appetite and the taste for that thing begins to diminish and now you resist it. Now, even when it comes and you become so steadfast in the thing you love to do, you begin to hate it. I'm walking you through this thing as best I can right now. You take, you meditate on this word. You speak this word, you declare this word, and it causes freedom and deliverance. But Satan will try to come again. And he'll try now, and he'll try to come and get you back into bondage, so don't go back into it. Now I'm going to stop here. I want you to do this. I want you to make this confession of your faith. Say, in the name of Jesus, I have all authority and power over all the ability of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means <clears throat> hurt me. Say, I declare that I am whole in every area of my life. Say, I have the mind of Christ, the wisdom of God is formed within me. Say, I have revelation and insight to this authority that's been given to me by Jesus himself. Say, I have authority over all the ability of the enemy. And nothing, no thing, shall by any means hurt me. That's good. You can choose not to be hurt. You can choose not to be offended. I choose not to be offended. I choose not to allow your words to hurt me. I can choose that. That's part of that authority. Amen. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Father, we thank you. We give you praise. <sighs> I know y'all hung in there. Y'all hung in there. Y'all hung in there. Y'all hung in there. Y'all been hanging in there. I appreciate it. Y'all hung in there. I had to get it out. If there's somebody here who's never made Jesus the Lord of their life, online or in person, but you want to today, I want you to give an, get an opportunity. I'm going to give you an opportunity to get born again. If you're not absolutely positively sure, that if you were to die today, that you'd make it to heaven. There is a no-so salvation. You can know beyond the shadow of a doubt. The Bible declares that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God is raised from the dead, you shall be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. I want you to just repeat this simple prayer. But as you repeat it, I want you to believe it. Believe it. I'll just do it just so I don't have to go to hell. Wait a minute. You know, let's, let's backtrack. I want you, number one, to believe. Do you believe that Jesus is the Christ, the anointed one, the one sent by God the Father in this earth 
the only begotten of the Father who came to die for the sins of the world and take away the sins of the world. Do you believe that he's the Christ, the son of the living God? Do you believe that he died for your sins? He was raised from the dead for our justification and make us right with God. Do you believe that? Now let's pray now. And as you believe that, you confess this, transformation in your heart takes place. He gives you a brand new spirit. This, this is an awesome, man, I'm telling you, man, this is, the more I think about it, we become so familiar with it that sometimes you don't realize the power and the miracle that takes place. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you're the Christ, the son of the living God. I believe that you died for me. I believe that you were raised from the dead for me. Come inside my heart now, Lord Jesus. I make you the Lord of my life. Therefore, I'm born again. I have eternal life. My sins are forgiven. I'm a new creation in Christ. Old things are passed away. And all things are made new. I believe it. And I receive that. In Jesus' name. Amen. See? See, when somebody believes it, it takes. Transformation happens. Not just you reciting a prayer, but you don't believe it. Amen. Now, there's a, there's a experience subsequent to salvation called the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking with other tongues that now on the day of Pentecost that the Holy Spirit was given and he came and filled the house while all that was sitting in the 120 in the upper room and the Bible says it appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire. There was a rushing mighty wind and a sound from heaven that came and he entered into the earth's atmosphere and he sat upon each and every one of them and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues and they began to speak as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now, the Holy Spirit, he's here in the earth. The Father's on the throne. Jesus is seated at his right hand. The Holy Spirit was given on the day of Pentecost, and he's still here with us, the church in the earth. You don't have to tarry for the Holy Spirit or wait for him. There's some people who still believe in tarrying services, and I got to go through this motion. No. He says, whatsoever things you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you shall have them. I don't have to tarry and wait for the Holy Spirit. I just have to receive them. Just ask them to come on in. We overcomplicate this stuff. It's right there in Scripture. If that's you and you want power to come into your life, man, glory to God. Say, Holy Spirit, whether online or in person, say, come inside me now. I receive you now. You're now on the inside of me. I now have the ability to speak with other tongues as you give me the utterance in Jesus' name. Now watch this. Right there, you believe you receive him. He's on the inside of you. You now have the ability to speak with other tongues as he gives you the utterance, but you do the talking. See, I can talk, but now I'm trusting the Holy Spirit in me to give me the words to speak in another language, a heavenly language. So just like I'm talking in my normal, natural, native language of English, I can now intelligently, under my own will, but believing that, watch this, he's in me, he's assisting me to pray, that I can now speak. That's praying in other tongues, praying in your heavenly language. I'm doing the talking, but he's giving me the words to say. And further on, I don't have time for it, but the Bible also says when I pray like this, a couple of things happen. I speak forth wisdom. I pray the wisdom of God when I'm praying. I pray about situations that I don't know how to pray for as I ought to pray for them, but that the Holy Spirit will assist me. So Holy Spirit, I don't know what's going on about this situation. Now, I need you to help me pray about it. How long do I pray like that? Until I get the peace or the note of victory. 
it's like a calm. It's like whatever I had to pray about has been taken care of. The Bible says I charge myself up, just like I got to charge my phone or charge my iPad, and I plug it into the power source. You have the power source. See, I got a phone with a battery pack on it. And so if my phone dry, it goes out, all I got to do is push the button on the back, and it charges my phone. But the pack got to be charged in order for it to charge my phone. The beauty is you got the power source forever living in you. So if you ever need to draw on power, He's there. Draw on him. Last but not least, if you don't have a church home and you believe, watch this, this is a place you believe God is calling you to connect with, we want you to go ahead and, and join. Be a member of Spirit of Fire Fellowship. Listen, you get with somebody, um, one of our ushers or um, um, greeters, they'll assist you in getting connected with this ministry online. There's information coming up on your screen. Connect at spiritofire.us. An email you can send to us. You can reach out to us on our social media platforms. Listen, I'm telling you, God is doing something. This, this, this thing, get connected. Get to the place God called you to be. Get to the place he called you to be. Get to the place he called you. Where he calls you, he supplies. It's your connection. It's your springboard. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, at this time, whew, all right, y'all bear with me. I went over a little bit. All right, at this time, we want to um, do this. We want to go ahead and take a uh, communion this first Sunday. Um, we're not going to take long. For those, listen, you don't have to be a member of Spirit of Fire to partake of communion with us. You just need to be a believer on the Lord Jesus Christ. And I know normally for, for sake of time, um, we would go um, in the past, we would go to 1 Corinthians, and we would look at verse 11, 23 through 32. Uh, I'm going to start doing that a little bit more to start doing more teaching. I'll have a lot more, you know, some extra time to go over that. But for sake of time, this is the commandment of Jesus that we do this as we rightly discern the Lord's body, we rightly discern what Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection meant. That's why I teach it, because I need to give you understanding on it, so that when we partake of communion, we don't do it in an unworthily manner, not discerning his body. We, I used to say stuff like, you know, just like unrepentant sin in your life. Um, but listen, even if the sin hasn't been quote-unquote repented of, you recognize that the blood has washed you and cleansed you from the dominion of sin and forgiven you. And so now you just say, wait a minute, I recognize this. So Lord, I turn from that thing. And through the power of your blood, because now I'm partaking of this juice, this cup representing your blood, it reminds me that I've been made free. I'm free. This wafer representing your body that was tattered and bruised and torn that says, by your stripes, I am healed. So no matter what's going on in my body, this represents my healing. Even healing in my soul, I don't care whether it's mental or physical, whatever area, that healing has been provided for me. So when I partake of this, it's like me receiving it right now. I take it like medicine. I receive it. You can do this at home as often as you will. Jesus just said, do it in remembrance of me. Remember what I did. And that's why we do this. We were reminding ourselves and remembering and honoring what he did for us. So, as we take, now hopefully some of you at home, you've been able to run and grab some elements from your kitchen or whatever um, to partake with us. If not, then you can do it after we log off. You can go ahead and get your cracker, your juice, bread, whatever. Bless it and say, this is sanctified for communion, and go ahead and take it. You can do it as often as you will. Jesus said, this is my body, which was broken for you. As often as you eat it, do it in remembrance of me. Let's eat. After the same manner also, he took the cup. Now, I don't want to pass over this so fast because of the sake of time. But when you partake of this, receive your healing. Receive things, receive your organs straightening up, levels balancing out. Whatever needs to happen, see yourself coming off the medication. Yeah. 
You don't have to remain on it for the rest of your life. See, that, that, that's the mentality. Now, as often as you drink this, he says, I want you to do it in remembrance of me. Let's drink. Hallelujah. At this time, Usher coming by as a pass to pick up your cups. And as you're doing that, we're going to honor God in our giving. There's information coming up on your screen where you can give digitally on the digital platforms. Um, those in person that desire to give digital, you can do it through Cash App, Venmo. Cash App, you can just go to Spirit of Fire. Um, dollar sign Spirit of Fire, you can sow. For those in person, if you need an envelope, you can raise your hands. I should be more than happy to assist you if you're giving by cash or uh, check. He's like, some people still, yeah, some people still write check. Oh. I say you still you, you can make it out to S O F F. That's sufficient, and you spell million M I L L I O N. Thank you. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And as you're giving, we thank you for your financial support, your continued financial support to do what God has called us to do. Um, we're in the process. I'm going to be, I want to do it more formal, like a more of a vision day where I begin to share some things, kind of get numbers together and everything. But um, there are some things that I believe that we need to accomplish and get done as a, as a group to advance. You know, the question comes up, what's next? Um, and I want to start sharing that. I'm going to have some time where I'm just seeking God and uh, replenishing, building myself. Um, and so I just want to um, share one of the things we um, are going to begin to enhance our worship experience and our media and everything so far as new equipment and that we need to get the gospel out and to do it in an excellent way. But we also need people to help and to support in the operations of these things. And so um, I'll come with some of the final numbers, but also we're going to take it step by step. And we'll believe in God, even for ministry headquarters and things of that nature, so to do the work that God has called us to do. Amen. So um, I'll be sharing more about that um, amen, in the uh, weeks to come. Um, so it'll be phase one. And what I'm looking at calling it is the Nehemiah Project. As Nehemiah went and built, rebuilt the wall, that uh, we're going to take it phase by phase in building. And we're going to take it step by step, the projects that we need to accomplish and achieve, because we got work to do. Amen. All right. Well, if anybody needs any more time, raise your hand. Oh, this one. Amen. So as people are sowing as they're giving, Father, we just thank you as they give. And as we give, thank you that's giving back to us. Again, good measure, pressed down, shaking together and running over, that you're causing men to give unto our bosom. With the same measure that we meet, you said to be measured to us again. We sow bountifully, therefore we receive bountifully, we give cheerfully, and you're able to make all grace abound towards us, that we have in all sufficiency and all things do abound to every good work. We bless you and we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. As you're sowing, as you're giving, we can go ahead and stand to our feet to be dismissed. Um, amen. Did y'all get anything out of this today at all? I pray that you did. I pray that you did. Um, I don't want to waste your time. <laughs> it's my job to get into the Word, to dive and dig into the Word, to receive revelation from heaven and to bring it back and feed you. And um, amen. As Father, we thank you that we leave this place whenever your presence, that the angels of God are encamped around about us to keep us, to protect us in all our ways. No evil plague will come nigh our dwelling. Nothing evil shall happen unto us. With long life, you satisfy us and assure us your salvation. We live long and we live strong. We bless you and we thank you for it in Jesus' name. And everybody in agreement, say amen and amen. On the count of three, let's shout Jesus. One, two, three. Jesus! You are dismissed. Go in peace. Love you all. See you next time.